Okay, so we're going to talk about the standard bubble wave right now, and I'm a bit of a historian of money, um, and I've re researched the hell out of pretty much every bubble uh, there has ever been. And uh, like I always say, in a, in a world of ever-changing variables, new tech, new stuff, there's only one thing that never changed, which is us, human humans. Human nature never changes. Um, and as a result, we have a thing called a standard bubble wave, where um, all bubbles move in exactly the same fashion. Um, and along this, you, you see all sorts of different emotions, but there are four main stages to the standard bubble wave. So first of all, um, you have what, uh, what is called the stealth phase. So stealth phase. <laughs> That's good spelling. Uh, phase. Okay, and this is where the, the, the smart money, the, the really, really smart money, um, like the billionaires out there, the people who, are, who have uh, better information than the rest of us, um, get access or get a heads up about a certain asset class, uh, investment vehicle of, of some sort. And so the general reaction is, hmm, interesting. <laughs> we'll have a little play with it. And then you have uh, the awareness phase. So... And this is where uh, sophisticated investors, so they tend to be sophisticated slash institutional. No dot there. Um, <clears throat> so basically, um, I, I would say I'm a sophisticated investor um, and also the in institutional players, so the banks and funds out there, they're also sophisticated. But the thing is, um, we are following the breadcrumbs, what, what the smart money are really leaving behind. Yes, you have some smart money in this, this phase over here, but I mean, this, I guess um, this also looks very similar to the, the diffusion of innovation. So I guess we have the innovators here, the early adopters, early majority, late majority, well-ish. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, and this is where basically the, the, the price of a, of a particular, of whatever the asset, starts to pick up a little bit, but there's still a bit of a caution here. So, um, but this is where people start accumulating their, their position. And this phase is what um, is called the mania phase. We don't have room to write up here, so I'll write it down here. What I prefer to call it the mania phase. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's been a long day today. Um, scratch that, I call it the media phase. <clears throat> and the only reason that this is the mania phase and we, we get this massive exponential growth type curve and the blow off top at the top um, is because of the media. It's the media that cotton onto something and then start bringing it into the, 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 the lexicon, if that's even the right word, um, into the ether. <laughs> Again, not the right word. I've had very little sleep. Um, so, so yeah, and this is what pushes it up and this is what pushes it into uh, the mainstream. And guess who plays in the, in the media, mania, mania phase? Yep, you guessed it, the public. And in terms of emotions, it's basically all, all of the positive ones. So first of all, you get a bit of confidence because you, the, the early adopters within the public go, oh yeah, so my, my stuff is rising. Then you see excitement and fear of missing out as the prices get way out of hand. And then eventually greed. Greed and also conviction at, uh, around the top here because you get people who think they are literally Billy Big Balls and have the Midas touch. Uh, because they've been riding this out, but what they are completely oblivious to is that this is just another standard bubble wave. Um, and then eventually we will have this big old uh, initial dip, which will shit the shit out of everyone, uh, or scare the shit out of everyone. Um, and this is the dissipation phase. 
And this is where you see every negative emotion you could ever dream of. I've experienced, experienced this uh, firsthand. So you have denial. So basically, we have a thing called uh, a dead cat bounce. Don't worry about it. But basically, uh, the market has a massive rally. Sometimes they're both to the, the same level, but most of the time, uh, it's a little bit lower. And people, this is where the Johnny come late, lately is uh, sort of get in and go, oh, no, no, this is, this is just a, a retrace and we're, we're going to carry on going. Nope. Uh, and so you then see denial, fear, grief, desperation, uh, capitulation, and then eventually depression. And it's normally around these two, this part of a bubble, or no, this part of the bubble where you tend to see um, suicides sometimes. If you look at 1929, there was a massive spike in suicides, uh, which isn't a good thing. Um, and yeah, this basically, um, around here, the smart money, these boys exit up here, and that's where the public are really starting to buy heavily. Um, and then the smart money are buying everything down here uh, when, they, when they know everything has crashed. And that's what you need to do. You need to use the public as a contrarian indicator. Um, so the, the cool thing to realize though with this is that with all bubbles, what happens is it attracts attention, uh, talent, uh, and capital, and so even after the uh, after the whole storm has passed, from the very beginning to wherever it may end, it's always up. It, I've never seen a bubble where it's crashed and it's actually been lower than from when it started way back here. So you always see an, a, an increase in prices. So um, that's basically the standard bubble wave. And in terms of where I personally think we are in w with cryptos. I believe we are smack bang around here. So whether we're still in the awareness phase or we've just entered the mania media phase, no one knows for sure, but we are around here. So this is why um, this is a very good time to get in because we are, um, yeah. Or, I mean, there are some people that says that we're around here with the bear trap. Um, where basically we have a nice rise in prices and this is why the smart money, they, they go, right, we need to get in here at a good price. So they start ramping the price up, then they crash it on purpose um, to, to get in a better position and then they, then they start the, the big rally. So we could be here or we could be here. Um, it's completely your call. I, if I were to put money in on, on it, I'd say we're, we're in this area uh, right now. Now, Assets move in different speeds up and down the standard bubble wave. So cryptos, I mean, if you took the tech bubble from sort of start till finish, it took maybe six years. Um, with cryptos, it's probably going to be about three years. Um, what tends to happen, especially with tech ones, is that um, the, the distance, so the, the height doubles and the time halves. Um, so yeah, that's that. So cryptos is racing up and down this, this standard bubble wave. Whereas if you look at something like um, yeah, virtual reality, I said before, um, that's been going up and down this for a long time, 20 plus years. Um, if you look at the stock market and the, uh, the bond market, both of which are in massive bubbles, um, it's been going up for hundreds of years. So, uh, and the, th the fastest one that I've seen is Pokemon Go. Is it Go Pokemon or whatever? It's where people are like running around in, outside with their Pokemon phone things. I never did it, so I haven't got a clue. But it, it basically experienced this, and then it died. Um, so yeah, that's the standard bubble wave. It's it's worth being aware of, um, and this is why. If like going back to the original tech bubble, nineteen uh, on the run up to the two thousand pop, um, every single man in his dog was buying tech stocks and internet startups, even though these startups had no staff, no product, no offices, nothing. Um, and if you go back even 10 years ago with the subprime mortgage collapse, every man and his dog was either a mortgage advisor or someone doing buy-to-lets, putting 100% or oh, 0% de deposits down, etc. In the US, it is um, people getting 100, being paid um, to get a mortgage, 110% mortgages uh, for a period of time. So e that's when everyone was buying houses. And right now, I personally believe we have... Um, uh, another dip to come with property. I actually think with property, we are around here. I think we had this big old crash in 2008. Uh, it, it crashed, it's been rallying ever since, but I think with property, uh, we're here, and it's the same with stocks. Uh, so stocks, 
in property. So I really do believe that we are on the precipice of um, some really lovely falling um, in, in those respective markets. So hope that makes sense and I'll see you in the next video.